to actually treat any of our patients differently from their normal patients. Even in terms of drug, what people complain about is that some drugs are called generic drugs. The constituents of these drugs are not different from any other one that is branded. The only difference is that it doesn't come with a brand name which makes it quite expensive, but it doesn't mean that it does not work. Uh, so if any of our patients go to any hospital and you are treated differently just because you are carrying an NHIS card, I think the best thing is for you to let us know and we'll take it up from there. Okay, I've, I know of a, a, a consumer who had a son in the hospital and um, he, he had some, he convulsed, he had a seizure and um, he was told that this, this, the main drug they needed to treat the son wasn't covered under the scheme. And she had to pay. But basically, bed, the bed was paid for and general medical supplies and all of that. But that drug, which was what was used to treat her son, was not under the scheme. Why? Uh, like I said, what we do, because it's a social insurance, it is not everything that is covered. We have what we call exclusion list. And why we have that exclusion list is that because it's a pool of funds, what we do is that our payment methods are in two models. We have what we call the capitated payment, and we have what we call the fee for service. At every point in time, because of the pool of funds, we need to be careful so that one treatment does not erode the whole pool, and that is why we have what we call the exclusion list. So it is not impossible for a drug not to be covered under the, the insurance package because what we provide is what we call the basic health care package. So it is not a comprehensive package that covers everything. But as much as possible, if you look at our drug list as of today, almost every drug is covered. Even if it is not to the maximum stage, at least we still cover it. Because even up to chemotherapy, we give six chemotherapy treatments at the initial stage. So that actually takes a lot into cognizance. So uh, for such people, they might not know their rights. They might not have access to the drug list. If such things happen, if you are not sure, even if you pay, if you make a case to us and we investigate and we see that such drugs are under our care, you will be re re reimbursed. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll look at other consumer complaints in this sector. Don't go away. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're discussing the National Health Insurance Scheme. But you can catch up by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and our website. We still have in the studio Mr. Olufemi Akingbade. He's the Acting Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer of the National Health Insurance Scheme. You're welcome back to the program, sir. Thank you once again. So, let's just, you talked about generic drugs, the exclus um, ex exclusion. exclusion list. Thank you. Now, some doctors the council had had an opportunity to speak with claimed that the government's remittance to them was small and insufficient to cover serious treatment and payment per patient is paltry. Could this be the reason why NHIS patients are subject to shoddy treatments in hospitals? Um, I, I want to sympathize with those that have that complaint. Health insurance generally is a game of numbers. And we have, like I said, we have what we call a capitated payment. And what that means is that for every, every patient that you enroll, you get an amount of money for that person per month. And for now, for the formal sector program, what we pay is that for every patient, we pay 750 naira per person per month. And it depends on the number of enrollees that you have. It is left to you as a facility one, to be able to go out to market people, to bring in more people, because the more people you get, the right. more pool of funds that you are going to have. The whole idea of insurance is to have a large pool, so that when incidences occur, you take from your pool to be able to take care of those incidences. So for those that are saying it's paltry or that is small, it depends on the number of enrollees that they have. A lot of some people have large enrollee base, and they will not give that complaint. Yeah. And payments as much as possible, we try to make it very regular. 
And one of the things that we do is that we also pay quarterly up front okay. so that at least you have a large pool to work with. So for those that are complaining, I think it's just because of the number of enrollees that they have. So what we encourage them, go into the markets, do your marketing, increase your enrollee base, and that complaint will not be there again. So, in, for patients in need of advanced treatment, the referral process takes forever and people are dying, people are complaining. Why, why is that so? Uh, well, I am surprised. I've heard that in some, time, in, in some cases. And that actually has to do with probably the health maintenance organization that they're using. Because that is the role of the health maintenance organization. Those are the HMOs. There is go between between the NHIS and the facilities. If you go into an healthcare facility, what you are treated for initially is the basic primary health services. And if for any reason you have a secondary case that you need to be referred for secondary referrals, you call the HMOs and the HMOs will actually release a code for the hospitals for you to be treated because we have what we use as standard coding okay. for such referrals. So if those referrals are not coming on time, then it might be from the HMO or it might be a prank from the facilities. For such cases, we have hotlines that we make available even at the facilities that you can see. You can call us directly. We have the obligation also to give you those codes if the HMOs are delaying you. Or we call the HMOs directly to be able to give you those codes immediately. There is no referral that should be up to 24 hours. And that is a case that we need to start taking up. If we hear those complaints, we take it up. And we're grateful for uh, organizations like CPC that is coming on board to make this known to us to be able to tackle it. Okay. So what's your procedure for monitoring these hospitals? Like I said, um, for us in National Health Insurance, we have a full department that is saddled with standard and quality assurance. And one of the things that we do regularly is that we try to get feedback from our enrollees. We organize enrollee forums. We have also standing committee meetings with the health maintenance organizations. And we have hotlines that are available at every facility. When you enter the facility, one of the things that you will see in every NHIS accredited facility is that you see the logo and you actually see the customer lines. So that if you have any problem at that point, even without leaving, you can actually call any of those numbers and somebody will be there to attend to you, either to take up your case or to refer your complaint to an IR authority. Uh, these are just simple procedures that we put in place. We have email addresses that are also available at those centers that you can actually send an email. And one of the things uh, in NHIS that I have tried to do is that that mail, if you send a mail to it, a copy of it comes to me directly. Okay. So I can actually take it up even at the highest level, no matter the complaint. So we have procedures for entertaining complaints from enrollees. But sometimes, some enrollees, they go to the hospital. They have problems with the facilities. Because of their closeness, either with the doctors or with the nurses, they don't want to report them. But they keep spreading the news that they've been treated badly, but it never gets to us. If it gets to us, we take it up. So consumers are sure that they can get redress when they come to you? If you actually look at what we've been doing in recent times, you actually see that we've even gone ahead to sanction some health maintenance organizations that have been erring in terms of paying uh, the facilities. So not only the consumers, even the facilities will protect their interest. If you're not getting due payment when it is supposed to be paid, if you report to us, we sanction appropriately. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful having you in the studio. Thank you so much. We look forward to having you again. I'm, I'll be delighted to be here again. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll look at other segments in the program. Don't go away. To make a complaint to the Consumer Protection Council in order to obtain redress over a product or a service, you contact the seller or service provider and present your query. Ensure you keep relevant records of your conversation. If the problem is not resolved at this level, complain to CPC. Your complaint should be clear, providing relevant facts such as where and when you brought the product or service. 
you should state clearly what you want from the seller or service provider.